from the title, I'm going to talk today about a specific uh, security uh, breach in uh, uh, IoT uh, systems, which is uh, called sensor uh, spoofing uh, attacks. Why sensor spoofing? So uh, if you look into any IoT, sensors are the entry point for your IoT systems. It is all about data that is uh, collected, how to analyze this data and so on. All these data are coming from sensors. And we ask the question, what if someone is messing up with your sensors? How can he use these uh, inputs that are coming to your system in order to influence the behavior of your uh, system? So in particular, I'm going to, uh, to talk about three uh, different instantiations of these uh, attacks, starting from the basic uh, attack model, false data injection, and then I'll start to increase the complexity as we move uh, forward. So what is false data injection attacks? Let's uh, motivate with this uh, scenario over here. This is from uh, a movie. So here, you, uh, these guys were trying to spoof. The sensor over here is the security guard. So there is a security guard, this guy over here. Think of his eyes as the sensor, the vision that he's trying to uh, sense a physical uh, um, uh, signal. And what these guys did is they used this device in order to conceal the physical environment environment to conceal the, phys the actual physical signal and put another physical signal on top of it to make the sensor read something that is not uh, realistic. So we did the same uh, uh, kind of uh, concept. So uh, if you go to your car, just look behind the wheels. There is the anti-lock braking system sensor that is used to measure the speed of your uh, wheel. It is a magnetic sensor that is attached to your chasers. And then you have a, a tone wheel that rotates in, uh, as your wheel is rotating. So when your wheel is rotating, you will have a magnetic a field that corresponds to the uh, speed of the, your uh, wheel. And what we did is we implemented this uh, small module over here that we have some magnetic sensors that measure the actual magnetic field around the sensor. And then we have a magnetic actuator that is used to generate a magnetic field that cancels the original magnetic uh, sensor, uh, magnetic signal, and then put another one on top of it. Actually, this system was designed using Simulink autocoder, so thanks MathWorks for uh, these uh, uh, functionalities. Okay, so uh, we implemented uh, this uh, attack module and we brought some uh, pieces from a real Mazda car. As you can see here on the test bed, we have two sensors. One of them is being under attack, the other one is uh, without the attack. And here is one result showing so the red curve is the actual wheel speed, uh, and the black one uh, is, so the red one is without any attack. This is the original wheel speed. The black one is the attacker intention. This is what the attacker would like the sensor to read. And the blue one is what the attacked sensor is actually reading. And you can see that our system can make, uh, can fool the sensor, making it uh, read what, is, what the, at the attacker intention, not the actual uh, attack. So after we implemented this attack, we wanted to test it on a real uh, system. My, I did this during my PhD, so my advisor volunteered his car, but we couldn't find a student to ride a car with an EBS hacked, so for some obvious reasons. So we have to use some uh, high fidelity simulators to test what is going on. So here, this is uh, using a car sim uh, simulator. This is what you expect from an EBS uh, system. You see some ice, you press the brakes, so that's what you expect. Let's have again the same system, uh, uh, same driver, same uh, uh, conditions, but having only one of the sensors being under attack. You press the brakes and that's what is going to happen. So this is just uh, to motivate what the consequences of uh, these uh, uh, spoofing attacks. So after we published this paper, multiple other um, uh, have uh, like multiple other ideas that have the same kind of uh, flavor appeared on other domains, either on biomedical devices, on uh, quadrotors. And what is interesting about all these uh, attacks that traditional uh, information security does not offer any uh, defense. So the, the attack happens on the analog domain even before the signal is translated into the digital domain. So uh, encryption, firewalls whatsoever will not be able to detect such an attack because the actual data have been corrupted before it is transferred to the cyber domain. 
So this motivates the need of how we can uh, analyze the data that we collected in order to identify whether they are under attack or, um, uh, or not. So let's assume we have a system over here. The, it is not very IoT-ish. It is more a uh, cyber physical system without a lot of connectivity, but it captures the idea. So you have a car. You have multiple uh, sensors on your car. The typical uh, scenario is you collect all this information. You try to estimate the state of your uh, car. And once you have the estimate of your, uh, of your state, you give it to a feedback control algorithm that controls the system. And now we assume that some of the sensors are malicious. We don't know which is which, but we know some of them are bad. And we would like still to use all this information, fuse all of them together, and have what's called as a secure state estimator that can estimate the state of the system regardless of the existence of an attack. And once you can estimate the state of the system, now you give it back to your uh, favorite uh, feedback control algorithm and close the loop. So th the threat model is you have P sensors in your uh, system. S of them are, uh, have been compromised. And here, when we're talking about sensors being compromised, it can be a physical attack like the one I showed before. It can be someone uh, uh, sitting in the communication line and changing the information before it comes, uh, goes to the control center. It can be a software virus, it, whatever. And the attacker have access to S of, your, uh, of these channels. And once he has access to them, he can attack all of them at once. He can attack some of them. He can change his mind as he can go whatever he likes to do. And we don't know a priori what the attacker is going to do. We don't have any stochastic models. We don't have any boundless assumptions whatsoever. And the key idea is to exploit the redundancy in the data that we have. For example, if you have a, a, a motor, you have a speed uh, sensor that measures the speed of, uh, the, uh, of the motor, and you have another sensor that measures the electricity going to the motor. And we know that from physics the relation between the current and the uh, sensor. So you can use one to sanitize the other. The problem uh, here is first how we can sc uh, have a, a, a scalable uh, uh, technique, especially in IoT. You have hundreds of, of sensors. How you can how you can get all these uh, uh, correlations between all these different uh, sensor streams and so on? How you can do this at real time? You cannot freeze the physical system until you do your analysis. This have uh, uh, have to happen at real time. And the problem, all uh, it is a combinatorial problem. It is an MP hard problem. I'll not go through the details, but just give you a flavor of uh, what uh, uh, we have on this uh, domain. So here is a comparison uh, for a particular test bed where uh, we are simulating a power grid. We have uh, 500 sensors, and we attack 100 of these uh, uh, channels. And here is a different uh, techniques that was proposed in the literature. First one is brute force uh, search. You try to enumerate all subsets of sensors and see which one of them is, are consistent. Uh, using mixed integer programming, using SMT solvers. And as you can see, all of those uh, consumes a lot of time. Uh, and the technique that we developed that we call satisfiability modulo convex programming that combines some ideas from Boolean satisfiability solvers, like uh, uh, which can be used to harness the combinatorial aspect, as well as convex uh, programming. And we can drop all uh, uh, the execution time all the way to 15 seconds uh, compared to seven hours or three hours from the other techniques. Let me give you here one uh, experiment. Uh, so here we have this uh, quadrotor, and we are attacking the IMU on the quadrotor. And as you can see, the quadrotor is flickering while it is moving. Until this point, we will increase the attack vector a little bit. And that's what's happening. Let's do exactly the same uh, experiment, but now having our solver, our SMC solver, running uh, online. You can see for the same attack, the squad rotor is moving very, very smoothly until at this point we increase the attack vector and we can capture it. As you can see here a little bit of flickering, but now we can return back the quad rotor back to safety. 
So this is the vanilla false data injection attack. Let's uh, increase the complexity a little bit. Let's assume we have a, a traffic uh, system. We have uh, some good cars, green cars over here. We have some bad cars, uh, red over here. And all these cars are um, sending their information to a centralized uh, system that decides the routing for, for these uh, cars. And let's assume that the red car is started to report some cars that does not physically exist on the uh, highway. So these yellow cars are civil cars or ghost cars that does not exist. And the control center will think there is a lot of congestion on the highway and accordingly will reroute all the good cars to the sideway, creating a real congestion on the sideways. Here we have both false data injection attack as well as what's known as a civil attacks. So, and again, we would like to do the same thing. We would like to have a secure traffic estimator that can estimate uh, where are the good cars, where are the bad cars. Same story, MP hard problem. Uh, we need a scalable uh, algorithm. So here is one uh, um, uh, test case from Bologna City. Uh, so we are using the Bologna data set uh, over here, we are, uh, which collects the, uh, uh, the traffic inside some of the highways in Bologna uh, during the rush hour. And we attack, uh, we in starting to inject some of those uh, uh, Sybil uh, cars into the system. And as you can see here, uh, without any uh, at, without any security uh, mechanisms, the um, uh, average travel time for the cars inside the city can go all the way to the maximum capacity of the traffic system. Using our technique, we can drop it back all the way to the normal uh, average travel time. Finally, let's put privacy on, uh, on top of it. So we have a lot of sensors. They would like to uh, collaborate together, but they have some privacy uh, uh, constraints, and some of them are being uh, under attack. So here is one uh, technique that we use from uh, uh, homomorphic encryption after uh, doing some uh, uh, um, um, uh, edits here and there, but again, we can do uh, uh, we can do it even if some of the sensors are malicious. They are collaborating together in order to leak uh, the information from the rest of the sensors. Even if they are collaborating with uh, a cloud, we can still have some privacy guarantees as well as some resilience guarantees. So, with this one, I would like to summarize. I tried just to give uh, uh, a summary of a lot of results that we have on false data injection attack as well as civil attacks and privacy constraints.